everyone belongs in this hobby. Yeah. That is the first thing that you should ever know. So I'm here with Callie, and I have a question that I couldn't answer about water hardness. So I figure, well, let me talk to the person that I would ask the question of to give me some answers of why would anybody need to know what their water hardness is of the tank? Um, when does it come into play with anything? And is it related to pH and those kind of questions? So come along with me, Susan Q. Hey. Callie, thank you very much for coming. You want to introduce yourself? So thank you for having me. I am Callie Parker. I am the president of the Bucks County Aquarium Society. I am also employed within the industry. I am actually a technical services representative for the brand API. So I spend a lot of time answering a lot of fishy questions, uh, both as my job and also as my hobby. So I'm a full-time fish enabler. So I'm happy to clear up any questions that you have on hardness. So I had an aquarium that I was on top of. I have my API kit and I was testing ammonia, nitrites, nitrates, making sure everything was copacetic. And some of my fish started dying. And one of the first questions I was asked was, what's your hardness at? I didn't even know what that meant. So can you explain to people why would that be one of the first questions? And how do I know what my hardness is at? Of course. So in the context of your question, as far as having an issue with your fish, I can tell what they were asking or it's carbonate hardness, basically. And the reason people have so many problems and have so many tank crashes is because the nitrifying bacteria need a carbon source. So normally they're pulling carbonates out of the water to convert all that ammonia in your tank that the fish are producing. So, if your carbonate gets too low, they can't do that. They can't convert ammonia, and then your tank crashes, which is not a good thing, uh, as I'm sure you know. Does carbonate have anything to do with the carbon that is in the filter? No. The carbon in the filter is carbon that can create bonds with materials within the water. And so things will adhere to it. Carbon will not come away from your filter and will not circulate in the way that carbonates do. And carbonates are naturally occurring in your tap water or should, but they vary. So you could be very lucky and have high carbonate hardness and a nice pH. And uh, honestly, if you have good carbonate hardness and a good pH, that's usually your, your, your golden. You, you can go for a while before you have issues. How do I know what my carbonate hardness is? And is that GH or KH? So your carbonate hardness is your KH. Um, and the carbonate hardness correlates with a higher pH. It's not always the case, but it will buffer your pH. So the higher your carbonate hardness, the harder it will be to change your pH. So if you have a lower pH, you usually don't have too much carbonate hardness. It's usually easier to manipulate your pH if you really want to. But generally, you want at least 50 parts per million uh, of carbonate hardness, which is like three, maybe four degrees of hardness. And you can measure that. Let's see what I've got around. Test strips are an easy way to test hardness. I don't know if you can see, GHKH. Um, test strips are the fastest. I have all the reagents ever, and I still use the test strips because it gives me an answer immediately. And I like instant gratification. Uh, but other than that, you can do a liquid titration test, which are these guys, which you basically add drop by drop until you see the color change. And that, that gives you your answer how many degrees of hardness you have. So why would I need the GH and the KH? Your KH basically supports your pH, supports your cycle. 
your GH is different. So GH is made out of minerals, calcium, magnesium for the most part, and fish need those minerals. So each fish has evolved so that it can kind of match its intake um, to the surrounding environment. So there are ion channels on the fish that regulate how much of these minerals come in and how many go out. So it has a range of acceptable levels of these minerals. And if it's too low, they're not gonna be able to get enough. And if it's too high, they're actually gonna have toxicity symptoms. So really you're finding that good level for your fish to be most comfortable. And so it's not struggling to get what it needs or struggling from an overabundance, basically. And is that something that can come right out of my tap that way? Yes. So the general hardness, uh, you will have some in your tap water. Um, around here in Pennsylvania, it's liquid rock usually. So you have a pretty high general hardness, but it does vary from location to location. If you use any RO water, RO water is empty water. So you can kind of adjust things downward by adding a portion of RO water if you really wanted to keep some really soft water species uh, that can sometimes help with adjusting it downward. There's not really a whole lot you can do to adjust it downward. Uh, you can always raise it by adding calcium and magnesium. They make supplements for that. My tap water comes out 6.8, no matter what, it's always 6.8 mm -hmm. and that's neutral. When you said it's like liquid rock, I would imagine that would make it more acidic. No. So you kind of want to decouple in your head the KH from the GH. Because the GH, normally hard water is higher pH, but it's not always the case. Because you can have some really funky water, especially if you have a water softener on your house. Um, because I get a lot of calls about that. Like people think they have hard water, but they don't realize they're on a softener and that sometimes messes with their readings. They might have a perfectly fine KH from that softened water, but they have no general hardness and then the fish starts struggling. Um, stuff like mollies, mollies especially, uh, if they don't have enough hardness, they get what people call the shimmies and that's a neurological disorder. They will actually start um, kind of not computing and, and not swimming correctly and they'll just kind of go in spirals and that's not good neurological problems are to that extent are usually not treatable so you really want to make sure you have it correct because by the time you realize it's not correct it's too late and what kind of fish like the the gh and when you say hard, the hardness of gh what is the number? Like, I know where my ammonia needs to be at zero. My nitrites need to be at zero. My nitrates should be under, what, 40? Changes for every fish. That's why it's so tricky. So, let's so if you have African cichlids, you want it as high as possible, usually. Um, mollies are not far behind. Goldfish aren't either. Uh, most tropical fish are middle of the road. Actually, let me see. Okay kind of see the, the scale here. Uh -huh. You want to be somewhere in the middle for most cases. Okay. And then for cichlids, you kind of go off the off the scale a little bit. Okay, and like um, if you had like uh, German blue rams, I want to- Or discus, exactly. Then you have around like 30-ish. And you have to be very careful with that. And that's the reason why they're so tricky oftentimes is because you have to keep the hardness low for them to be okay, but that's very easy to crash that tank. So it's a very kind of meticulous caring for that tank in order to do well. I had a 125 gallon amazing tank with huge fish in it. Gorgeous, long term, there were lens fish. And then all of a sudden they all started dying. Now that tank is almost always RODI water because it's upstairs, it's closest to my RODI bucket. 
and it became RO water, and then it was completely devoid of all hardness, and things started crashing. It's a very easy uh, mistake to make. I know plenty of people that have called in that have done that. They either didn't add anything or they added general hardness and didn't realize they also had to add KH. Which is carbonate hardness. Carbonate hardness, yep. How do I add what needs to be added? I, I know in my cichlids, I put in crushed corals. I know mm -hmm. my turtles all put in crushed corals. To I thought that was just adding to the pH. I didn't realize that was adding it adds both. It ends up adding both. And actually, good old baking soda oh. will add to carbonate hardness. However, a little goes a long way. So like an eighth of a teaspoon for 20 gallons, kind of, a little goes a long way. Um, I don't use it because it is that concentrated and I have tiny tanks. So I use like the pre-made powders. Oh. Um, just to raise the KH and keep the pH in a reasonable kind of level. So it's not very hard to raise the KH as long as you, you know that you're looking at it and you need to keep it within certain parameters. Um, usually as, as long as you have a, a few degrees of hardness, um, which is equivalent to like at least 50 uh, parts per million, because different tests will give you different answers as far as whether it's parts per million or degrees. Try not to get too confused about it. It's all the same stuff. It's just a conversion rate. One degree of hardness is 17.9 parts per million. So if I yes. have all these tanks in my basement who all use tap water, mm -hmm. everything except for my brackish water tanks is all tap water. I should be able to test, and some are heavily planted, some have no plants. Would they have the same GH and KH coming from the same water, or would plants change that? So they are likely all going to have the same general hardness unless you've messed with it, like with the, the uh, crushed coral. However, every tank's going to be slightly different on carbonate hardness because each tank has a different bio load, which means it goes through carbonate hardness quicker. And plants will eat that up too, uh, depending on the plants. Um, Balisneria is is one that really likes to pull that out of suspension. Because I know I don't test my tanks that are pretty balanced anymore, but I'm only testing for those ammonia, nitrite, nitrate. I know it's good. Every once in a while, I'll test for TDS because I know if I just keep topping off. With my water, TDS comes out at almost 400, so it builds up pretty quick. So, but I have never tested for any hardness ever. Usually, what you want to do is you test the golden three of pH, KH, and GH before you add fish. Like when you're just starting things, or if you're doing water exchanges, those are the three that you're testing, and that's just your baseline. So, but those three are what you want to match for your fish. So let's say I was a newbie starting up with a brand new tank. You just kind of steer them towards the do water exchanges often. Because no matter what, they're going to replenish the KH with their water exchange. Okay, the KH will get replenished, the GH will not. The GH will likely stay the same. Unless you top off without water exchanges for a very long time, then it will start to climb. So what would you recommend to a, a newbie into the into the fish keeping hobby that has one tank? They're cycling their tank. Would you not steer them at all to testing for hardness in the beginning? So if you know from the outset that this person's not a fish nerd, they just want to enjoy their fish, just test strips and done. When people do fishless cycles, mm -hmm. when they're adding ammonia, it is very easy to accidentally add too much and then bottom out your KH, and then you wonder why it's not working. Usually, I want to get the test strips in front of them because that's immediate answer. And that test is just, everything but ammonia? Right. So if you do give them test strips, make sure you give them an ammonia one too. 
Um, because if they're missing that, they're missing a huge chunk of what they need to watch. Don't look down on people who want to keep it simple. It's right. okay. Oh yeah, like, yeah. You, you have to find what works for them. Absolutely. Test to make sure your tank is cycled. And depending on like if they're just got their better fish, they just want them to be happy. <laughs> and once they get used to your water, as long as you always have your water and do a lot of water changes, you should be stable. Right. So is unless someone starts changing water with RO water, which I mean, a lot of people like the um, like the bottled water at the supermarket, which is not marketed for fish. Some of those have very low mineral levels, and you can get into trouble with that because people want to do good by their animal. They say, "Oh, this is a water that's been very purified. This is perfect." They bring it home, and then they have an issue because they don't understand that empty water is not good for fish. So what would some of the fish's symptoms be for having empty water? Most are going to actually get hole in the head disease because it's actually going to start eroding because what happens first is they will try and compensate, compensate by kind of thinning that slime layer on them. And they're going to try and get those minerals somehow, but that kind of predisposes them to problems and they're going to start eroding a little bit and it's not good. You see that often with um, cichlids, if they are not given the hardness that they need. If you know that you're going to, I don't know, be away or you're strapped for time and you, you think you want to skip a water exchange, you really need to be testing your KH before you make that determination. Because if the KH is already low, those fish are not going to survive. You really either need to do that water exchange or supplement with KH before you leave it be because the fish are just not going to be there when you come back. Do you have any advice for someone to keep them in the fish keeping hobby to make it easier? If you're not going to go to the level of checking the carbonate hardness, just more and more water exchanges. That's your golden rule. If you're not going to test that, just more water exchanges. General hardness, you can't get around. You have to set that for your fish or else you're going to have fish that suffer and that's the end of it. How do you set the general hardness for your fish? You basically figure out what your target is by looking up the species information and then you add your additive. So it's usually a powder. Um, it's a, usually in the RO section of your fish store because RO water usually needs to be remineralized. Um, and they'll have a powder and it just says increases GH, general hardness, or it says calcium, magnesium specifically. Okay, so if I test my water before I know what kind of fish I want and find out what the general hardness is, then I know what, what my choices of fish are if I don't want to add anything, correct? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. That quarantine tank needs to match the tank I'm going to be putting it in. Yes, and that's true for pH, and that's also true for general hardness, because it's it'll shock them. If it doesn't match, it'll, it'll shock them, because pH it changes how their ion channels and, and how they interact with their environment, and the same goes for hardness. So if they're used to operating in a certain environment, and then you move them to another one, it really messes with them. They can take in too much or not take in enough and they have a bad time. Each each fish has its own stats. You gotta match the, the pH and the general hardness to begin with and then everything else kind of changes as you go. You just gotta monitor it. So does algae play a part into low or high hardness? Or, or so, yes, kind of, because your plants should always be able to outcompete algae. They are better at what they do than algae is. However, algae is great at taking over when the plants aren't getting everything that they need. So if either the carbonate hardness is low or you're not fertilizing that tank enough, um, that's where it comes in. My plants need to be fed better, correct? Or the better way of thinking about it is fed completely. 
because it's a balance. If you have to find out what they're missing and supplement that, because if you just kind of throw nutrients at them, it might still be unbalanced and you might still have algae problems. Anything else for the newbie out there or the person who's starting to get two or three tanks and wants to expand? Know your fish. I mean, match your pH and your GH to your fish and supplement your KH. And as long as you're cycled, you should be good to go with those. When in doubt, do small water changes. Yeah, absolutely. You can get, yeah, you can get so far with doing that. It's, it's really simple, but it works. Because yeah. what you've done is you've basically validated what was needed to replenish the KH um, in order to keep the fish. But before you get to that point, you kind of have to test to know. Does the GH or KH have anything to do with uh, in the breeding process of fish? Reproduction is another big thing where you have to match the pH and GH specifically because the corian, the outer casing of the egg, um, will either dissolve or it won't, but that's pH and GH dependent as far as how it reacts, whether it dissolves too quickly or not at all. So you have to have that correct if you want to breed the fish uh, or you're going to have problems. Well, thank you so much, Callie. I appreciate it. And you are one of the many reasons, and you're actually one of the main reasons, why I kept coming back to Bucks County Aquarium Society. Because a person with anxiety disorder walking into that room was a bit overwhelming and you were so kind and so accepting of whatever level I didn't have. I was still at the, oh, I got pretty fish, I belong. You're like, absolutely you belong. Everyone belongs in this hobby. Yeah. That is the first thing that you should ever know. Hey, everybody, it's Susie Q. Hey, everybody, it's Susie Q. Nah, nah, hey, everybody, it's Susie Q. So come along with me. Say, I'm Susie Q.